from Psalm 62. And he brought up the movie The Matrix. And I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting movie in 1999. In 1999, everybody was doing apocalyptic movies. But I found how he related these two very interesting. And if you've seen the movie, you'll pick up on it right away. And if you haven't, well, it's a classic. Go watch it. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, even if you haven't seen it, I'll be able to describe it well enough to get the point. What is The Matrix? Well, in the movie, a, a man named Thomas Anderson is a soulless cog in a wheel in a downtown corporation. But late at night, when he's alone in his room with his computer, he's a hacker alter ego, and he calls himself Neo. And Neo is a seeker to find out what this matrix is. He's heard about it. It's all very hush-hush. He can't figure it out. And so Neo comes in contact with a leader named Morpheus. Boy, you can't come up with better names than that. And Morpheus explains the unimaginable truth of the Matrix. Mor Morpheus gives Neo the option about wanting to find out more or not. And he said, if you take the blue pill, then you will remain ignorantly blissful and you'll stay in this fake wonderland that we call this world. But if you take the red pill, if you take the red pill, you're going to go down the rabbit hole and find out the truth of this world, the real world in which we live. And of course, because the movie wasn't over in 15 minutes, he took the red pill. And he goes down the rabbit hole. And he found, finds out that the Matrix is actually a computer program, this is kind of a sci-fi thing, that creates a residual self-image. And that in the Matrix, you are actually living a fake life with a, with a a residual self-image of what, how you think of yourself, living in a world that's kind of fake. It feels real, but it's not entirely real. And we believe in the reality, but we too, as Christian people, are in a matrix. Because the world around us is so much bigger than this simple world in which we live. And most people live in an earthly matrix. Matrix. They're living in a world without God. And your world without God is an, is an illusion. Part of why we're here as a church is to broaden people. If to use the illustration, giving them the red pill so they go down the rabbit hole and see that all around them is God. And God is relating to us and God is working with us and God is struggling with us. And the vast majority of people Never see it. They live in an earthly matrix where what they're doing is the end all. That there's nothing beyond what they can feel or see or touch or smell or taste. And they're missing the vastness of all the other things that are happening beyond this earthly matrix in which we live. They don't see the spiritual all around them. And God provides the truth and the meaning for our lives. And if you don't believe me that we're living in a spiritual matrix, watch these kids while they're playing their video games. And they're blending in the video game and out the video game. Even when they're away from the video game, that's all they're thinking about is the video game. How big a stretch is it to believe that we're in a matrix? When I was growing up, most people kind of hit their adulthood when they, as soon as either when they graduated from high school and had to get a job and hit the real world, or if they were fortunate enough to go to college, they might have screwed around a little bit their freshman year, but then they, they huckered down and they got to work and they got their, finished their degree and they got their job and they were grown up and you were graduating at 22, 23 years old. You were, you were a man or a woman then. Nowadays, kids aren't growing up until they're 30 or 35 sometimes. They just can't quite grow up. Not everybody but a larger majority than, than I think was in the past. And I think part of that's because they're living in an earthly matrix where they don't want to grow up. They want to play. They want to enjoy the little things of life that are entertainment value. I'm glad I grew up when I did. Because we didn't have all of these distractions, these matrix things to keep us from what was truly valuable. We didn't have video games, so we, we went to church. We didn't have all these other distractions. 
700 television channels, Netflix and Vudu and all the other things that you can watch on television so that you can get anything you want anytime. I don't know that I'd have gotten through college if I had that much fun at my fingertips. And I feel bad for parents now. You guys have younger ones. Think about how hard it's going to be to move them beyond this earthly matrix of all this stuff. Because at the end of the day, who cares whether you've won Warcraft, the world of Warcraft or not? Who cares whether you're in the 10th world of Zod or whatever it is? That's meaningless. And real meaning is moving beyond the earthly matrix in which we live and finding meaning in what's real. In what's real are human relationships. Psychologists are worried and warning us now that all these distractions are keeping us from relating to one another. It sounds an awful lot like a matrix. It's a fake world in which we move around together, but we never really relate to each other. And apart from God, everything's an illusion. One of, I think one of the late 20th century, early 21st century villains of the world is Bernie Madoff, the Ponzi scheme guy that made off with everybody's money. The guy destroyed families and he crippled nations. And how did he do it? He did it just like the Matrix. He started with the idea that he could deceive Reality, And he did it for a while. He talked everybody into believing that he was this wealthy, significant person that had a, a plan that nobody else had ever thought of. A matrix of sorts called a scheme where he could make money for you. And all he did was reinvest it in the lining of his own pockets. It was all on paper. And the saddest part of it is, how did he ever think he'd get away with it? We fool ourselves and become so delusional in our earthly matrix that we, that we can't even understand these ourselves well enough to know that we're ruining people, that we're destroying each other sometimes. And we rationalize away because we're living in a, in a wonderland that isn't real. We've gone so far away from who we truly are as people of God. And that's why we evangelize. I've had people say to me, if, if, people, if all people aren't going to hell that don't believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then why do we bother to evangelize at all? To guide them away from meaninglessness. To take them out of this earthly matrix of nothingness and give their lives meaning. And it's probably never been as important to evangelize as it is today because there's so many things that become meaningless. I know so many friends of mine that worship sports and I am close to being guilty. The greatest pastors are those who can name the sin because they've lived them themselves. <laughs> I spent hours listening to deflated footballs all week. If that isn't delusional, I don't know what is. I had to hear it on ESPN. It was on Good Morning America the other morning. I mean, good Lord. And you think about the time that's wasted and the things that aren't done and what becomes important. We heard a lot more about deflated footballs than we heard about ISIS beheading one of the Japanese men that was in Syria. That's the delusion. We don't want to hear the bad things. We don't have the faith to control all that. So we, we delude ourselves into believing that the real important things are the things that don't hurt us, that don't challenge us. And so, instead of having sleepless nights of anxiety, we pretend and create a world that really isn't meaningless, or that is meaningless, that doesn't make any difference because that's safe and it's comfortable and we like our delusions. And so we take the blue pill and we stay in wonderland. It isn't real, but who really cares? But that's not who God's called us to be. God's called us to take up our cross. God's talk to, uh, calls us to read the paper and to listen to the news and not worry about deflated footballs nearly as much as worrying about people who are being beheaded 
people who are starving, about whether Cross Ministries has the money because they're having to, they're, the number of people that are going to Cross Ministries has almost doubled in the last couple years, and they're turning dozens of people away, families, every day because they just don't have enough. And while most of the world is deluding themselves in, in entertainment through the earthly matrix, matrix, you and I and other people sitting in pews this morning are having to take up the cross to hurt on behalf of others and trying to shake other people out of their delirium to give them that red pill to go down the rabbit hole to take up our crosses and care where others are unwilling. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that there are people who are willing to risk, to suffer, to think about people beyond themselves, who think self-importance is actually the greatest delusion, and who are willing to try to be Christ-like in their loving and in their support. I've seen this church do wonderful things, and I'm awed by so many of you who do so much in God's name. And it would be a lot more fun to play a video game sometimes than to do the things that are necessary in a church in Christ's name, and yet you, try, you each and every day choose to take up your cross rather than your Game Boy. And for that, I thank you. But our job isn't done. It's to continually guide people to see beyond this little momentary place, get beyond the, the illusion, and see God everywhere around you. And when enough of us see and respond and take up our crosses, there is nothing we can't do. But it's going to take others. And the power of one person asking another to come to church to group and bound together, to give our time and our talents and yes, even our money so that no one down the road gets turned away from cross ministry. It's security to dream and to pretend, but it's a false security. The, ma the earthly matrix says, hoard your money because that's your only security. When God's saying, give a portion of it and trust that I will protect you. Yeah, but I need every last dollar. I don't know what it's going to be when I'm retired. Give a portion. Don't give it all. You still have to take care of yourself. But give some so that others may have the same opportunity. And I will take care of you. It won't always be easy. But I'll take care of you in this world. And in the next, that's reality. So we are called. Next week when we do invite a friend, and over the next year, to seek and to see the, ma the earthly matrix we live in, and to fight to tear it down with love, compassion, hard work, and discipline, so that all might see the glory that is all around us that so few see the glory of God.